Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you miss any of the most excellent videos. In front of us here, we have the Texan S8800. It's an AM, FM stereo, long wave, short wave, with single sideband, portable radio. I purchased this radio from Hong Kong for a total of $242 shipped. Yes, this was a pricey one. I've been eyeballing this one for a while. Figured, let's do it. So here's the box it came in. Picture of the radio. Title there. Carrying the radio. A little bit of bullet points. And we'll go over all that. This box is pretty big, so I can't really flip it around. So I'm just going to go to the back side. And the back of the radio here. Box, we got the picture of the radio. Remote control. See, that's pretty cool. We're going to go over that remote. You're going to love it. It's. I was like, what, why would I need a remote for a portable radio? But it actually is pretty handy. Uh, here's a bunch of symbols. Uh, what stands out to me is AM triple conversion. Uh, notice this thing really sounds good on short wave. Just amazing. Uh, 650 presets. Uh, so those are really neat things. An RCA line out. That was kind of interesting too. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's the box. So inside the box, I took everything out, except when they ship the radio, it's pretty basic packaging. On the inside here is a just like a cardboard box tray like they do with the 660 model. If you've seen that review, I'll, I'll have a link in this video to the PL660 by Texan. Very simple, basic box with the radio upside down in there on just a sheet of bubble wrap on the front and back. So not a lot of protection. And really, it, it kind of was like, oh, wow, I spent all this money in this really cheap packaging on the inside here. But it was enough to protect it. Just want to let you know that if you open it up, it's going to be like a cheap experience when you're pulling the radio out. Uh, but we'll show you what's inside the box. So let's go ahead and do that. Put this aside. And let's see. First thing, the remote control. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom this down since that box was huge. So here's the remote control. Runs on two AAA batteries. We'll go over all the features in a moment. Cool. We get a charging cable. This radio requires a charging cable. This is the mini USB variety. It's nice they do that. Batteries for the remote control. Maxell, two AAAs. We get this really cool adapter. On the back of the radio, it has a BNC. And this is an adapter they give you to build your uh, input jack. So you can unscrew this. And then there's your terminals you can solder to or crimp. I think you'd solder to those. Heat shrink tubing. That you can hook up your external antenna to the BNC. That's a really nice. And it's got this little strain relief here for the input coax or whatever wire you use. Nice, nice little thing they added. You have to run out and buy one. And then we get to the manual. Here's the manual. Now I'll back up again. This manual is like a book. <laughs> but it's really nice to read. It's actually very simple, basic, everything to the point. And we'll go over all these features on the radio together. So let's just go to the back here. I think they talk about some specifications, which most people like to know. And let's see where it starts here. I think... Yeah, here we go. Frequency range and tuning steps. This is a good little thing to look at. You got long wave. There's your medium wave, short wave. Uh, also, the stepping when you're in single sideband is 10 hertz stepping, which is really nice. Uh, expanded FM. So you have 64 to 108, 76 to 108, 87 to 108, and 88 to 108. So it has all that in the radio. So really nice. Love that. Over here, we have some sensitivity. Uh, there you go. If you guys are into that, it may be something of interest to you. Here's three IF frequencies. There you go, station memories. I'll be sure to tell you about those. Uh, some power, speaker, two watt output it looks like on speaker. Sounds really good. Okay, so there's the manual, pretty simple. Again, we'll go over all the basics. All right, let's get to the radio. Yeah, this thing's awesome. I've been having fun with it. Okay, here it is. So let's bring it back up some more, jeez. <laughs> It's a good size radio. I like it. Um, so this radio here, dimension wise, we'll go over real quick. It's 10 and three quarter inches across. It has a height of seven inches. It has a case depth of three and a half inches. And that includes the tuning knob and the case. So to that front and back. Pretty cool. Size comparison. I just have a few things. Don't want to get too crazy because I don't have much room. 
CC Pocket fits kind of in the speaker grill area. <laughs> that Iron Man is going to do the same thing. Yeah. So it gives you a general idea. It's, it's a good size radio. Reminds me of the Field BT. So I think it's a, might be a little narrower. I'm not sure. But uh, definitely kind of reminds me of the Field radios by Eaton. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about features of this radio. A lot of features. A lot of things I want to talk about. So hopefully we'll hit everything in this video. So let's go ahead and start. So left-hand side here, just a simple design, nothing special. Uh, front here, we have Texan. It says BCL receiver. Um, behind the speaker grill, I'm judging there's about a three-inch speaker. Um, I really can't tell. It didn't say in the book, I don't believe. But I'm judging it by like, like this here, the radius. Uh, here we have a power button, bold and red. <laughs> So one thing about this radio is like, why they go with red? I don't know. I mean, this this if this was metal with like a red enamel around the edge or something. It would look really awesome. But they put a big red plastic button and everything else in here is beautiful metal. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing it's a carryover from a different radio. But uh, yeah, somebody dropped the ball on that. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's okay, but aesthetically it should be something else. I almost want to take this apart and paint this like... A, a brushed aluminum color or something. <laughs> I might. I still might do that. Uh, here we have a band select. It's like a rotary. It's notched. So it's continuous for band select. That's kind of nice. Uh, AM bandwidth. Selects your bandwidths. The um, neat thing about the AM bandwidth is you have quite a bit. You have four modes on AM and five modes on single sideband. And we'll try to touch on those when we turn the radio on. Here we have volume knob. Uh, this is an analog volume knob, which is really nice. And you also have Digital control by the remote, which we'll talk about. And we have bass trouble controls. Yeah, makes this radio sound amazing. <laughs> uh, going to the top of the radio, bring this up here. We got little buttons. We got alarm button and time button for setting the alarm and time. You can only set the alarm from the radio. You can't set it from the remote. So that's something to know. Uh, you have a display button, delete function. Uh, we have a VF and VM button. So you can view frequency and view uh, memory modes, which is nice. So you can do a lot from the radio, almost everything except for direct entry of frequency and some other items, which I'll bring to your attention that the remote does that the radio cannot do. Uh, you can see it says, uh, was that orange say there? FM set. So that's, that's setting the different four broadcast bands that you saw in the book there. Uh, here we have AM normal. It takes you out of USB and lower sideband mode. Uh, FM stereo to FM mono switch if you're on FM. Uh, which is the speaker. You don't need FM stereo. It's better to tune in mono mode because it gives you better reception. Here we have a 9K, 10K switch also on the USB button. Down over here we have a memory button and it toggles your uh, long wave on and off when the power is off on the radio. Here we have an ATS function. That's your auto tuning storage and you can do it from the radio which is really nice. Here we have a blue light. Now this blue light is saying that the uh, remote will turn on the radio and use be able to use the radio. And after about an hour, this little blue light goes off and some power saving. And what happens is it turns off the ability uh, to communicate with the remote, which means that if you have this thing somewhere, you have to play with a knob before you can use this to do anything with it. So yeah, it just it's to save power. Um, so it's, it's nice, but it's kind of different. I wish it was always active. Um, that would be nice. Because then you can you don't have to worry about going over the radio to turn it on before you can use the remote. Because the remote has a power button. <laughs> You'd think, yeah, just a little oversight, but I'm guessing, again, power saving. All right, really cool features. Um, this tuning knob is awesome. Oh, this is all solid metal, by the way. These knobs, uh, this band select, this button, I mean, this uh, AM bandwidth, volume, bass dribble, and this tuning knob is just amazing. It's knurled. Got a really cool grip on it. And it's, yeah, it's solid metal. It's amazing. Uh, underneath this tuning knob is a reset button. So if your radio ever has a glitch, you just pull this up gently, they say, and there's a reset button underneath there. So I'd tell you that. It's in the instructions. Uh, it's tuning. Uh, we have a fine tuning knob here. This is metal also. Uh, you push to get your different shortwave modes. And you also do this for fine tuning mode, which is really handy. Uh, so a lot of cool things you can do right from the radio. I thought with a remote, I'd be kind of like uh, gimped a little bit. But no, you can do almost everything you need to from the radio, which is great. Right-hand side, we have... Uh, we have some switches. We have internal and external antenna switch. You guys can see that there. Um, works really nice. This radio is built for external antennas, which is really nice. Um, I wish I had a setup, but I don't. I'm using just the telescopic whip and that, uh, but it does really well. DX local switch. Pretty simple. Here we have your line out RCA. You pull this jacket off and there's a RCA left and right line level out, 
which you can control with the volume knob. Here we go, stereo via headphone, earphone jack. So the headphone jack is amazing. This radio, no noise floor, so there's no hiss at all. Um, AM listening, shortwave listening, NFM stereo is fantastic. This is definitely a radio you'd use with headphones and love it. Uh, just amazing. And you might find yourself wanting to use this radio with headphones, especially looking for that faint signal on shortwave. Um, just a really, really cool setup. I like how good that is. So on the top here, we have a carrying strap which you saw in the box. I don't have it undone, but yeah, you can carry this around with you. Some more BT antenna, uh, Solos 360, and extends out to 43 inches. Quite the long length. Let's go to the back of the radio. A lot to cover here. Uh, back of the radio, you can see it has a vented cabinet here. It says Texan S8800. Um, has the impedance of the antennas, 50 ohm on the FM shortwave. AM antenna is a 500 ohm connection. Power source is two 18650 lithium ion batteries. And there's a charging port for it right there. It says charge only. You cannot run the radio while you're charging, by the way. Uh, they recommend having the radio off when you're in the charge mode. So you have to charge it overnight, pretty much, uh, when you're not using the radio. Here's a cover over the BNC um, connection for the FM shortwave external antenna. And here's your jacks for the AM antenna. Uh, behind here is the two batteries. Difficult to open this door, so I'm not going to do it on video. But once you open this door, there's two little test buttons. Uh, to test the cell if it's good. So you hit the button, if it turns red, LED comes on, it says that battery is good. So it's kind of a nice little testing feature inside there. Uh, one thing I don't uh, really uh, understand about this radio is why there's no external AC adapter jack. Um, this radio, you know, with a remote control, you'd, you'd assume this would be more of a desktop style, even though it is portable. Um, it's kind of trying to do two things at once. Like, I want to be portable, but I want to be a desktop. And if they would have implemented an AC adapter somewhere, um, it would have made this radio that much better, but it's missing that. So... You know, for an expensive radio like this, I'm surprised it's missing an AC input um, or an AC adapter, you know, a DC input, you know, because this is only to charge the batteries. It won't run the radio. So that's very interesting, um, you know, emission. All righty. So let's go. I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. So there is the radio. Let's talk about the remote. I'm just going to pull this aside here, and we're going to zoom back down to the remote, and then we'll do some audio testing and show you how the radio works. So the remote's pretty cool. The remote does everything the radio can do and extra. So the extras on this are going to be, if I wrote this down right, this here is a auto sorting feature. So it'll automatically remove any kind of duplicate memory settings you have. And it'll also sort them by frequency, which I really like. That's kind of a cool feature. You don't have that on the radio, but you do have it on the remote. They add this back function. Now, this is kind of a neat uh, feature here. This is a square uh, piece that actually moves, has clicks on the corner. So you can scan, you can do back volume up and down. So it's kind of interesting how this plastic actuates those controls. Uh, the back feature is neat. What this is, is just kind of like a quick shortcut back to the station you were on. So if you have a favorite station, like I like my certain rock station, I could set it to that rock station, hold this down. That's It'll set it as my uh, frequency. That's my favorite. Pretty much call it your favorite. And then as you're tuning through shortwave, and you're like, I want to go back to rock and roll. You just tap that once. It goes right back to your favorite station. So yeah, really cool, quick uh, access to a favorite station. Um, another thing that this can do that the um, radio cannot do is this button right here, shortwave plus. You do not have this option in ATS, the auto tuning uh, storage, but the SW plus allows you to scan a particular shortwave band and store the frequencies. And it doesn't erase any, it just adds to the frequency list um, instead of deleting. So you can add, which is nice, especially with shortwave. So you'll be using this button quite a bit on your remote because it is omitted from the radio. So I'm just making everything else on there. Sort mode. Yep. ATS. Yep. So there you go. So that's just the extra features at the back, the ATS, the shortwave plus mode, and then the auto sorting mode there. But you can do everything else from the radio. All right. So let's go ahead and turn the radio on and we'll do a little audio test and then we'll tune it and show you how that tunes. Set this down here. All right. Let's go ahead and turn the power on. There's also a sleep function with the power button. You have a 24 hour clock and you can toggle that with your display. It should show you the alarm time and your local time in 24 hour mode. Six, five, four, three, two. 
little bit of audio test going on. There's a lot to talk about here with this radio, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, with band scans, we're going to do future ones, so don't worry. We'll you know, we'll explore the shortwave together, AM, FM. There's a lot to this radio. So real quick, let's talk about FM reception. Um, FM reception report. Uh, the FM sensitivity was really good. Uh, I would say, actually, it's very good. That's my rating. Uh, 81 stations found. Uh, a lot of work with the antenna. It is a 43-inch antenna, which helps. Uh, this radio begs to have a external antenna put on there, and they actually recommend a VHF uh, type of antenna, directional, for some real FM DXing, they call it. So that was cool. Um, so you can tell this radio uh, definitely looks for those signals, and if it has a strong gain antenna, it'll pull them in. I just can tell when I'm trying to tune those uh, stations in with the with the WIP antenna that's included. So yeah, FM selectivity was good to very good. Minimal bleed over from adjacent stations that are stronger. I had one or two local stations that had some issue, but otherwise pretty awesome on that. Uh, presets, uh, I don't know if I talked about this. The presets, um, you have 100 uh, on the AM, 100 on the FM, 100 on the long wave, 250 presets on the short wave, and 100 presets on the single sideband mode, giving you a total of 650 presets. So that's pretty awesome. So let's get, okay, we went over that. Let's go ahead and show how this thing tunes. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. We'll go to the shortwave band. So let's go ahead and band select. Turn this up. I'm just gonna hook up a wire. So we have some kind of signal here. In a moment. We'll show you how the bandwidth works. Okay, I'm just using a simple Texan wire clip to the Antenna there, you can see that? We're getting WWV on five megahertz right now. So you can tune here. As you can tell, it's going fast. You can do fine tuning. A bandwidth. can do, uh, so if you're in the uh, VF mode, you can press and hold VF and it'll browse. So you can seek, and it's going in the direction you last were in, so we're going to stop that by just touching the tuning knob. And since I went the other direction, if I hold this again, it'll go the other direction. So now it's going to browse. And in this mode, you can actually tap this button and add memories. So it's not storing anything now, it's just browsing, which is really nice. So it's going to browse through all the meter bands. Um, pretty nice to do it all from the radio and not from the remote. But we're going to go over the remote a little bit, and then we'll probably do some final thoughts on the radio. <laughs> yeah, this, this radio does a lot. I really like it. That speaker sounds amazing. Just the audio quality coming out of here is super fantastic. I just love it. Um, so we'll see if we can find a station here. We'll stop on the upper and lower sideband mode, which is really fun to tune with this radio. Um, let's go ahead and just uh, see if anything comes up here. So let's say you're looking for some ham activity. Let's hit this button here. You can see uh, the Modrin lower sideband, and you can see how it changes the stepping here. So you can do this. turns into this turns into one uh, kilohertz stepping for your big knob, and then the little knob here does your 10 hertz stepping to fine tune that station in. So, pretty nifty how that works. Like I said, we'll do a band scan, we'll try to find some hams and show you this. And to get out of the mode, just hit that button there. The only thing I wish it had, this is a pretty heavy knob. I wish this had like a stop function, so this can't be bumped uh, while you're on frequency. But that's why you have a remote, which is nice. <laughs> and we'll go over some of those features on the remote too. So let's go ahead and we'll change to um, AM. So here's your select. Whoops, band select. It's FM. There's our long wave. A long wave is pretty basic. Uh, you're not going to find much on here. 
in the States. I guess sometimes pick up a beacon. Oh, we know you would. Brian from Oak Park wrote this review after refinancing with Team Hochberg. I hear David Hochberg on the radio all the time, so I contacted Team Hochberg to pay off debt. I was shocked when David Hochberg returned my call, analyzed my situation, and he put a plan together, which his team then executed. Team Hochberg refinanced so nice thing. No mute on tuning. Investment property, which families on the base and we actually got on the c-130s outraged by it i don't i, I, I don't get it i'm agreeing with uh, corinne here it's him too it's either um i'm weird that way but you know what that, that's what i like okay, so companies with talent through recruiting and contract staffing to meet the challenges of an ever-changing market so pretty cool feature there love it uh, so yeah the uh, remote control um, I never thought that I would be really into the heavy remote control but this remote is really fun I'm gonna show you this um, put this off to the side remote control okay so you can do everything here you have a power button you can do the sleep function from here I mean right there's your sleep function you can do display puts the clock on for you um, you can delete and uh, delete your stations all of them on your tuning like it'd be like oh I don't want all those Delete them all in one shot or delete a single station. Uh, here's direct entry, so you could like go to say, let's go to 1000. So we'll just enter 1000 in. And volume, we can do. Now, the interesting thing with the volume is it does max to 30. So you it works with this one. So you set this. We needed a I'll website to satisfy our home office needs. Turn this down. So you can be at zero volume and this on five. So when you're in digital, you just. Thankfully, we turn to AmericanEagle.com. After meeting with us. So you can use those together. They're, they're kind of in tandem, this analog with this digital. We now have an incredibly effective communication tool. So if memory. It's mobile friendly here you can change your to frequency and memory mode. So memory mode, you can Let me show you this. thing to pretend. So you can see how the program's changing there. And you can actually enter in a program. Oops, I kind of went the wrong way there. So we want 50. There we go. And you can go back to frequency mode. And you can browse from here, which is nice. So you hit scan. To stop the scan, just hit one of these buttons. Stops it. If you wanted to save this as your favorite station, just hold that back down. Flashes. So say you're just tuning along. Let's go 780. Hit back. Takes you right back to that favorite station. Here's fine tuning. Up and down, fine tuning. And then of course, 10 kilohertz step, you're fast tuning. And you can actually hold it. Again, no mute on tuning, it's a beautiful thing. Love it. Uh, so you can go your upper side band mode, AM normal, FM stereo mode, AM bandwidth. So you're able to control that from the remote. And of course, you can go to different bands here FM, AM, for sure, wave bands. Which is fun. And then you can just plug in your shortwave and off you go for your tuning experience. <laughs> awesome. So that's how that works. I really like the remote. I think it's a cool feature. If you have this sitting up on your desk, kind of off to the side a little bit. But that part where you have to initiate the radio first before you can use the remote if you don't access it within an hour is kind of a bummer. 
and have a noisy adapter, but that's final thoughts. We'll talk about it a little bit. But there you go. All right. Turn this off, and we'll do final thoughts on the Texan S8800. Um, an expensive radio, yeah, $242. Is it worth $242? Uh, I would say it probably is. I mean, I, I had an 880. Um, I don't know if you guys know that I did review and I returned it. I didn't like it. Um, the speaker was just, uh, I don't know, it rattled everything. It was so strong for such a small portable radio that every time I used it, it would like rattle the antenna, it would rattle the buttons. Uh, but this radio, I think it uses a similar amplifier, but with such a bigger case and everything, it just sounds so much better. I'd rather have this than an 880, even though it's a bigger radio. I do like it. Um, I know it doesn't have as many memories. I think the 880 had quite a few more. I know my 660 has like, I don't know, over a thousand. But uh, to be honest with you, 650 is a good number. I mean, to be honest with you, 650 is plenty enough for me, um, for what I do. So I don't know if it is for you, but for me, it's perfect. Um, things I like about it, of course, yeah, the digital display is nice. Um, the shortwave is really good. I mean, I've been playing with this and I've been comparing it to my satellite, the Eaton satellite radio. And finding out that this is, just sounds so much nicer when I'm hitting those same stations uh, with single sideband. Uh, it's easier to tune uh, single sideband because it goes right to it and you just go slow tuning up and down as you need to. There is no separate, you know, pushing the side button like on the satellite to get that fine tuning mode. It's all right here, which is great. Uh, and then quickly scrolling through meter bands by pressing this down. I don't know if I told you about that, but we'll show you that in a, in a band scan. But overall, is it worth $242? Yeah, I mean, anything more than that, I wouldn't buy it. But at this price point, it's it's acceptable. Like I said, the, the glaring omissions is the uh, no AC adapter. And I keep saying that, but it's a big deal to me. But the, the positives are great sound, bass trouble controls, metal knobs really add to the, the overall kind of quality feel for this radio. Um, and then having this remote as an added feature, I think it's really just a handy thing to be sit back and, you know, tune from this. I was doing it and I was enjoying that. I thought that was a really cool experience for a portable radio. So yeah, it's uh, unique and different. And I think it does uh, a warrant a purchase. If you're looking for a little higher end experience and you don't want to send you 909X, um, I'll be honest with you, 909X has a, has a nice um, build quality to it, but the sound is not as good as this radio. And the shortwave is very similar um, performance wise. When uh, This is actually better with the antenna versus the 909X. So if you're looking at those, uh, this one might be one to go with. You know, this is kind of a great little compact size. I like this field type thing where you can grab it and go and go out in the field and hook up a wire to it and just have fun. It's just a, a great setup. I'm liking it a lot. So it's a keeper for Dottabert. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the presentation of this radio, give me a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, two, if you're interested in Texan radios, it's 8800. Just click the subscribe, hit the bell icon, get notified of future videos. I plan to do some band scans, some evening shortwave, some daytime shortwave, uh, medium wave, give you guys an idea what it can do. My first impressions does a great job. So very happy with it. Alrighty, guys. Well, the third, of course, comment um, on the S8800 down below. Would you buy this radio? Do you own this radio? How does it compare to other, other radios you own? Um, this is probably one of my best shortwave radios I have now in house. Um, so I'm enjoying it every bit of it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next episode. Take care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.